Wave Race 64, true to its name, is a personal watercraft racing game for the Nintendo 64. It was developed internally at Nintendo by their Entertainment Analysis and Development Division, more commonly referred to as simply Nintendo EAD. The directors on the game were Eguchi Katsuya, known for being one of the creators of the Animal Crossing series, and Takashi Shinya, who you'll probably know as the guy from the Nintendo Directs. This was the first and last game where Takashi would sit in the director's chair, since then moving on to more of a producer's role in Nintendo game development. Eguchi directed a few more games following Wii Race 64, but also seems to have become more of a producer over the years. The game released in Japan on my birthday, September 27th, 1996, a few days later on November 1st, 1996 in North America, and came to the EU a couple of months down the line on April 29th, 1997. It sold exceedingly well for an arguably rather niche racing title, being ranked as the 15th best-selling N64 game ever released. It outsold classics like the original Paper Mario, Mario Party, and Pokemon Stadium 2, a truly momentous feat. However, Wave Race 64 was not only a commercial success, but a critical one as well, garnering very high scores from a number of reputable gaming publications. But how does the game hold up today? Is it still as good in retrospect as it was at the time of release? Well, that's what we're here to talk about today, so without further ado, let's turn the dial up to maximum power and dive right in. When we start out the game, we're greeted with the classic Wave Race 64 theme that is still one of my absolute favorite songs in all of gaming, as well as the famous and rather divisive Wave Race announcer. Personally, I really liked the announcer as a kid, and that feeling hasn't changed all these years later. He makes everything you're doing seem so much more exciting and fun with his constant high energy and loud exclamations. I know there are people out there who find him somewhat annoying, but in my opinion, he only adds to the experience. The guy who actually did the narration for Wave Race 64 was an actor by the name of John Hewleton. Sorry if I butchered that. Hope you got a raise for this, my man, because you definitely deserve it. As for the music, it was composed by Totaka Kazumi. You might know him as the composer for Animal Crossing and the inspiration for the hip dog character K.K. Slider. When I found out Totaka also worked on Wave Race 64, I was honestly rather surprised because you don't really hear too many people bring up Wave Race when talking about him. It's usually just straight to Animal Crossing, which is in my opinion quite a shame, because Wave Race 64's soundtrack is probably my favorite of all time. I'm sure most Totaka fans are partial to his work on the Animal Crossing series or the Yoshi games, but for me it's Wave Race all the way. The classic 80s to 90s feel and tone of the soundtrack isn't something we've seen emulated in any substantial capacity for quite some time, and that makes Wave Race's music really special in my opinion. Pretty much every song in the game will have you grooving along to the beat as you ride the waves, and I can't stress enough how much this elevates the fun level for me. Wave Race 64 is of course a very fun game on its own, but the music blasts the enjoyment out to the stratosphere in my opinion. When the game first released, one of the main criticisms was that the music was too shallow or juvenile, but I honestly have no idea where that notion came from. I've only ever had great memories of the Wave Race music, and going back to it over 20 years later, I still love it just as much as I did when I was a kid. Thank you, Tota KK. I know we're already pretty deep into the review, but let's take a step back and look at Wave Race 64's main menu. There are four modes to choose from here, Championship, Time Trials, Stunt Mode, and Two Player Versus. Championship is similar to Grand Prix in the Mario Kart games, but isn't as similar as you might think it would be with the game being developed by Nintendo EAD. You start off with just the normal difficulty unlocked, which contains the first six stages. After you place first in normal, you unlock hard mode, which has the same six stages as normal, plus one extra. Place first in hard mode, and you unlock expert, which has the seven stages from hard mode, plus one last stage. If you manage to place first in expert difficulty, you unlock the last championship reverse. This has the same eight stages as expert difficulty, but they're all reversed. Unlike Mario Kart's mirror mode, which is just a mirrored version of the course, Wave Race 64's reverse mode has you actually run the same course, but backwards. I'm sure it's a system that most people out there are familiar with from games like Mario Kart and Diddy Kong Racing, but I'll explain how you actually get ranked in Wave Race just in case. It's pretty straightforward. You get points based on what place you get in each race, first being 7, second being 4, third is 2, and fourth 1. If you course out for too long, or miss too many buoys, you'll retire and get 0 points as well. I'm sure you've picked up on it by now, but the red and yellow buoys you've been seeing throughout each course are essentially another obstacle to make the game a bit more challenging and interesting than a typical racer. You have to pass the red ones on the right side and the yellow ones on the left side. In doing so without missing, you'll gain more and more max speed, up to the maximum power of 5 lights shown in the bottom right corner of the screen. It's a pretty simple mechanic when you think about it out of context, but it makes the races so much more interesting when you're actually playing. But getting back to the championships, 
The goal is to hit the required point total to advance to the next stage and stay in the running all the way up to the last race, after which you'll hopefully have more points than your opponents. If I'm being honest, going back to it all these years later made me realize that the championship mode is actually pretty underwhelming. Six of the courses are reused for every difficulty, which makes the game feel a bit repetitive. I would have absolutely loved to see each difficulty have its own courses, even if you had to reduce the total amount of races per difficulty. Wave Race was one of the very first games Nintendo developed for the N64 in complete 3D, so that might have something to do with the lack of content here. But Mario 64, a game developed equally as early, has a ton of variation in its levels, so I'm not too sure on that one, I guess. Another rather big problem I had with Championship Mode was that on the mid to higher tier difficulties, it felt like making one mistake would completely ruin my chances of coming anywhere close to first place. Now, there were some times where this wasn't the case, but it always felt like I was completely out of the race if I fell off or missed a buoy because the CPU opponents don't make mistakes. They even take the shortcuts on the higher difficulties, which completely defeats the purpose of them being there, in my opinion. The other big racing games on the N64, Mario Kart 64 and Diddy Kong Racing, both use items and shortcuts as a way to help you catch up if you fall behind, making you feel like there's at least some chance to catch up even if there really isn't. Now, I'm not saying that Wave Race should have missiles and oil spills, but I do think there should have been put in place some sort of catch-up mechanic. It's as simple as not having the CPUs use the fastest possible path with all the shortcuts on every course, so that if you make one mistake, you are forever at a really big disadvantage. In my opinion, the shortcuts should have been there for only the player to use, not the CPUs. That way you can still catch up, but with a bit of skill required to actually pull it off. It's for these reasons that I think Wave Race really shines in its two-player mode. When you're playing against an actual person who makes mistakes and may not know every single shortcut, it makes the game so much more interesting and fun. Same thing goes for the buoy system. It can be really hard to hit every buoy properly every race, so having another person who doesn't just take the ideal route every time, hitting every buoy along the way, makes races feel so much more like they were probably intended to, in my opinion. It might sound like I don't like championship mode based on all this, but I don't think that's true. Racing around and controlling your jet ski feels so satisfying in Wave Race that no matter what I'm doing, I'm always having fun. It's that fact that makes me sad there aren't more courses to race on and a more interesting Grand Prix system. Now, even if the championship mode is a bit shallow, luckily there are a few other modes here to keep us busy. Time Trials is pretty much exactly what you'd expect from a time trial mode in any other game. Just pick a course and try to get the best time. Very straightforward, but can be fun if you're the type of person who likes to go for high scores or compete with yourself. One thing I would have liked to see was a ghost for the time trials, so you know how you're doing at all times very easily. However, this was implemented in the Shindo Pak Taiyo version, or Rumble Pak supported version of the game in Japan. Say we didn't get it over here, but maybe I'll import it one day. Stunt mode is probably the coolest mode in the game in my opinion. You have to ride through the rings in sequence and perform tricks off the ramps of each course to earn points towards your total score for the run. It's a lot of fun, but has a hard ceiling of how many points you can earn because of the short time limit and linear nature of the courses. Which is a shame, because doing tricks in Wave Race is so much fun. As a kid, I was satisfied to just go into warm-up mode, follow that dolphin, and ride around for hours trying to do different flips and spins. It's so much fun, but I think that stunt mode doesn't capitalize on the mechanics they put in the game as much as they could have. Instead of making it similar to a race where you try to get to the end as fast as possible, maybe give a longer time limit so people have time to mess around and see what they can do, similar to how Tony Hawk games work. Also, maybe let the player pick a few courses to run in succession with a total score rather than just a single course, that way at least there's some element of variation in there. Obviously, best case scenario would have been actual separate stunt courses that are designed differently to normal courses to better play into stunt mode gameplay, but that might be asking just a bit too much. And I think that just about wraps up the four main modes of Wave Race 64. One thing I'd like to talk about briefly is the characters. There are four to choose from, each having a pretty unique design for the most part. <laughs> These guys are the same. And their own strengths and weaknesses. I play the chubby guy, D Mariner, because he's the fastest and has the least chance to fall off of his jet ski. He's pretty much always the one to pick if you're going for speed, but there are certain courses where others will be better. One thing I didn't know as a kid is that you can change the character's color to the player 2 color by holding up on the D-pad or stick while selecting. It's something, but definitely not the level of customization I was hoping for. I would have liked to see a few more characters and color options, and maybe even the ability to change your jet ski around if they really wanted to go that extra mile. This would also help to alleviate one of the game's biggest problems, the extreme lack of replayability. 
locking some characters, colors, and jet skis behind certain feats like high scores in stunt mode, all first places in championship, and really fast times in time trial would have given the player much more drive to come back and play Wave Race, thus lengthening the experience and making the game more satisfying for the player in my opinion. One layer of customization that I do very much like though is the ability to freely adjust your jet ski stats before the race. You can change the handling, engine type, and grip, with each very drastically affecting your performance. It's similar to how some of the newer Mario Kart games function, but Wave Race 64's customization is even better than that in my opinion. Rather than have to fiddle with different carts, wheels, and gliders, not really knowing what is the best for you, you just move the slider where you want it, and if it doesn't work the way you wanted it to, you can just change it later without having to give up on some certain cosmetic part you like the look of. A lot of times in Mario Kart games, the best option is some ugly clown car looking thing that I don't really want to use, but since it's the best, I feel I have to use it. However, with Wave Race, none of that comes into play except for with the characters. Definitely one of the biggest positives for the game in my opinion. You've been looking at them the whole review, so I'm sure you have a good idea of what Wave Race 64's graphics are all about. And I hope you'll agree with me when I say the game is very, very nice to look at, especially the water. The color palette changes from course to course, but I'd be hard pressed to pick a course I didn't like the look of. One of my absolute favorite moments in Wave Race is when the fog clears after a lap or two on Drake Lake, and you see how vibrant the water and greenery really are. No matter how many times I race there, that moment in the fog lifts is always so cool to me. Oh yeah, by the way, another really cool thing Wave Race does is change how the courses look and play based on what lap you're on. The best examples of this are the fog on Drake Lake and the sea level change on Southern Island. There's actually a shortcut under the pier that becomes available as the tide goes out. It's super cool. Not every course has something like this, but there are a decent amount that do. But getting back to the graphics, I played on an original N64 through a 2x HDMI upscaler to a normal flat screen TV, which I know isn't the optimal setup, but it's the best and easiest way to capture footage. Some old games don't look too great on an upscaler and a non-CRT TV, but I have to say Wave Race 64 really surprised me. The graphics were clean and the colors still looked really good. I've got the hand it to Nintendo on this one, and they did an excellent job with the game graphically. So, how do I feel about Wave Race 64? It's still a really fun game. The satisfying controls, amazing music, and vibrant graphics will make sure of that for as long as this game remains playable, I am sure. However, the game does have its fair share of weaknesses, namely the lack of replayability, the feeling that you have no chance if you make one small mistake, and the small amount of total courses, leading to a great amount of repetition. Like I said, the game was and will always be very fun to play, but these drawbacks prevent Wave Race from achieving its final, ultimate form, in my opinion. Some might chalk up the lack of content to the small size of the N64 cartridge, but Wave Race 64 shipped on an 8MB cartridge, a full 4MB less than the then-current maximum. So there was room for addition to the game, but Nintendo chose not to go that route. That's why I criticized the lack of content and replayability as much as I did. Wave Race 64 does have a sequel known as Wave Race Blue Storm for the Nintendo GameCube, which I've never played. I'm honestly really interested to see if they fixed any of my problems with 64 in Blue Storm, so I might just have to pick up a copy at some point if it's not too expensive. You never know with retro game prices these days. Believe it or not, there was also a prequel on the Nintendo Game Boy, simply called Wave Race. Another game I've never played. I'd like to see how a game like Wave Race actually works on a Game Boy, so maybe I'll pick that one up at some point too. But I think that's enough jet ski talk for one day. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the review. I know it might have sounded bad, but I actually had a really great time reliving my childhood, sitting on the living room floor, glued to my old family TV, playing Wave Race 64 with my two brothers. It's a game that I've always really enjoyed no matter how many years go by, and even after looking at it through a more critical eye this time around, it still has a special place in my heart and on my shelf. If you enjoyed the video, consider giving it a like, it's always greatly appreciated and helps me out a ton. And if you want to see more content like this in the future, consider subscribing as well. Thanks so much for watching everybody, and I'll see you in the next one. Back out. Oh yeah, you can also ride a dolphin in this game. 10 out of 10. Ooh.